Welcome to this recorded Remembrance Day service at St James the Less in Litchfield. It's such a shame that we can't be together physically, but we are together in spirit, in mind and in thought to give thanks for those who've gone before and have given their lives and have been damaged by war. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work for impenitence and faith, for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war and conflict, those who died subsequently of their wounds and those who survived in body but are damaged. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. The lesson is taken from St John's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Here ends the lesson. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. In my spare time and when there's no Covid, I act as a volunteer at the Sandon Memorial Chapel, some three and a half miles north of here. It's a National Trust property and the property really is about the works of Sir Stanley Spencer, well, one particular work. Because after his service in the First World War, he wanted to remember and to commemorate and give some thought to his experiences. And so with the help of some wonderful benefactors and patrons, he painted this chapel. And if you haven't been, when you're able, I suggest that you go because it's the most amazing thing. The Old Comrades of the Salonica campaign, which if you've never heard of it, was a, a campaign in the north of Greece during the First World War. The Old Comrades met after the war for comradeship and to share their memories together. And in 1928, they had a muster. And at the muster, these words were said. Side by side, we still stand. As united as in those grim, eventful days, survivors of a campaign and difficulties, sufferings and achievements, of which we and our absent comrades alone fully appreciate. We are not here for pomp and pageantry, but to grasp hands in perpetuation of that comradeship which has deepened as the years have passed. There is a still nobler purpose, to pay homage to the memory of those who lie in a far-off country, who today live again in the hearts of their old pals. And that, in a way, says it all for me too. It gets to the essence of what I believe we are gathered to do today. We are here to remember, to flesh out the bodies, to once again to bring to the fronts of our minds the sacrifice made on our behalf by those who went before us. We do not remember them in the sense that we don't know who they were and what their personalities were. We didn't have a personal relationship with them for they are long gone. Well, I've obviously been around a bit and I've been in conflict. And I know that from the perspective of a veteran, the place you want to be with to remember is with those who served with you. For they are the only people who truly know the experiences that you've had. We, of course, are not 
old comrades on the whole, were people who'd gathered here to remember sacrifice made on our behalf. It's a very Christological message. The Christian religion, the particular aspects that, of understanding that we have to do with our relationship with Jesus are based on his sacrifice. The fact that God gave his son to be killed for us. And that's what these soldiers did. They put themselves in harm way for the good of our freedom. And that is something we must never forget. And it's something that we should at all costs strive to prevent happening again. Today, we remember them. And in this village, we remember these people. We remember Charles Powell, Alfred Fillmore, his brother, Ernest, Frederick Sturgis and Charles Swain, Military Medal. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace for the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, 
calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in search for reconciliation and peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace of all peoples in the world. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all mankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Mm -hmm.